Or maybe I'll use this. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, uh, this is the releasing workshop, so I expect that there'll be a lot of you because we get lots of requests for this one. Um, and so in the next few minutes, there's gonna be more and more people coming in. The number's growing really fast, so just kind of be patient. As usual, why we let everybody into the room and uh, then we'll get started. So, there's my dog, or she passed away recently, so cute picture. Some, so in case you were wondering what was on there, so. So the interesting thing about this, this webinar, um, I love teaching principles of releasing. I love doing releasing with people. Um, I've been doing it for a, a while. I've never taught an hour long course on it before. I teach a weekend course. I teach a, a week long course. I have plenty of time to teach it. Why? Because there's so many nuances when we get stuck and we grow. Uh, there's a lot of techniques out there that are very easy to teach. And I'll give you one, if you guys want to research it, is something like tapping, or it's also called EFT or emotional freedom technique. Great little technique for moving trauma from the body. Um, very easy to learn. The problem I find with most techniques is they begin to fail you after a while. Um, uh, they begin to uh, like, for example, when the ego, the mind, the analytical mind gets a hold of the technique and understands how it operates because we do it the same day in and day out. and There's no growth and moving in new ways and changing and adjusting and, and paying attention to the depth of feeling and emotion in your body. The technique will start to not work as well. And unless you're really good at staying raw and emotional and feeling like you're trained at that, like, like the staff here is all trained to stay in more feelings. We work directly on understanding feeling. It's another thing we do. Um, it, maybe I should do a class on just understanding what feeling is, but understanding the depth of feeling, which is part of that is vulnerability, which is a huge piece, which Sam talked about yesterday. This this sense of vulnerability in your heart, something I worked a lot on because I was so analytical. And so the reason, um, if any of you saw the class with Sam yesterday, or you've seen any talks from Eddie Brick, which we'll get him in on here because he loves vulnerability. Uh, those two students really took to heart the teachings of vulnerability that I did. The, um, and they really mastered it and taken it to, to these amazing levels. And vulnerability is the key to all of this stuff, EFT, tapping, um, and, and particularly what we're gonna do today, working. That of willingness to open your heart and feel raw and then process emotions that you got to learn. And the key is to feel your whole body, but the heart is the primary source, the transmuting device of the internal emotional state. So what do I mean by that? The transmuting device of the internal emotional state, the willingness to feel raw and vulnerable comes from the heart. You can feel turned on from the pelvis. You can feel grounded from the legs with that rawness from the heart is what will process all the stored insecurities in any part of the body. That's why it's so important. It also allows other people to trust you when you're talking to them because they can feel who you really are. You're not hiding anything from them. So it's, uh, it's really powerful. Hey, hey, I'm looking at the panelist window over here and it, is this right? Uh, I just wanna ask you, George, it, it looks like we're recording this four times. Over there, is that, do we need to be recording it four times or are we? Oh, it's just one recording, it's just cause, um... We have people logged in as co-hosts, that's why. Mm. Okay, I just want to make sure we're not using up all our space and then suddenly it runs out on us. Okay, cool. Um, so there's, there's this rawness that comes from the heart. And Eddie loves the heart because he was so in his head when I met him. He was like a, a pit bull, er, er, pushing. And then when he got to the heart, his whole life changed. Women started to connect to him. He couldn't understand. I remember at one point he was out and he'll, I get him on here this show telling the story and he was out talking to, uh, out with two guys. One guy was a, a, a world champion boxer. Another guy was royalty from the Middle East and these guys were bad at meeting women. And so they asked Eddie to go bring over some girls and he can tell this story. And so he brought over these girls while he was at a bar to talk to them. Both girls ended up liking Eddie and not them. And he ended up getting both their numbers. And he said to me the, the next day or a couple of days later, he said, Brian, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why did all these girls suddenly like me when they didn't like me before? 
And it's because he's dropping into that rawness, that vulnerability. So we, we definitely need to talk more about that. I find when I'm releasing and I get into my head and I disassociate from this raw, vulnerable energy, I stop releasing well. I get it. I get into spins, which we'll talk about. I get into the resistance to releases, but that's not just true with releasing. That's true with any technique. So I want to emphasize at the beginning, your willingness to feel your body, particularly your heart, and then the rest of your body in relation to your heart and not think so much. It's going to be the key to really, really, really good releasing. Okay. It's going to be the key to shifting your reality and at a faster rate. Um, uh, so I've had students contact me and they say, my releasing's not working. And a lot of times it's because they're in the spins, they're stuck, but a big piece of it is because they're in their heads. They're trying to do the technique analytically. It will never work analytically. It's, it's, it's just not going to work. That's true of any technique. If you try to analytically master ballroom dancing, it's not going to work. Ultimately, the reason we love all this stuff is it to get good at it, to truly be good at it, it forces us to feel. To be a singer that makes people cry, you have to feel because you have to transmit that emotion. To be a guitar player that makes everybody weep when you, when you go into your guitar solo, which I've seen happen, you have to have emotion coming off your body, which comes through the music. To be a speaker that excites people and turns people on and motivates people, you have to, um, again, be in touch with your emotions and your feelings. So I want to welcome you to this idea of feeling, depth of feeling, because that's where you're going to heal everything from, transmission, transmute everything. And, and for those of you that are working on dating, as you get more and more and more into your heart and you talk to people from your heart, you're going to be surprised at how many more people want to talk to you back and it just gets drawn into you. Then you add a little turn onto that and boom, or in, in everything really changes. We've seen this time and time again in the week long. We get into these week longs and everything changes so, so radically fast. Uh, when, well, let's put, maybe I said that wrong. When we're in these week longs and we see guys go out and they're trying to flirt and talk and, and communicate from their heads, not much happens. They get into their heart, they get these deep connections with people. They get in their heart mixed with their gut and their turn on and bam, everything starts moving. And we can almost predict it because we can see before they go out that, that day where they're at in their body. So releasing is all about uh, getting all the stored traumas and thoughts and feelings and emotions out of your body a little bit each day. One of the keys we're going to talk about is the 1% rule. I'm going to start with that. With releasing, it's not about getting a, a quantum leap or a huge shift or, you know, what I always say, jumping the Grand Canyon. That's not possible. What it's about is getting a tiny little shift if you can get with each release, if you can get a tiny, tiny little microscopic shift, eventually uh, a domino effect happens and all this. Um, yeah, no problem. All this, this huge shift starts to change. Um, my name's already changed. Cairo. Are you talking to me? George, are you there? We got two. Yeah. Yeah. What's oh. going on? Are you talking, who are you telling to change his name? Uh, I didn't text you anything. I saw, can you change your name on the screen? It just popped up on, on the screen here. That wasn't you? Okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, so uh, I'm using Jonathan's laptop and Jonathan's using mine. So if you need to text Jonathan, text him on his phone or something, okay? Um, so where was I just at? Anybody remember? Okay, I lost it. But, um, but this big, sh you know, to get big shifts, you have to learn to feel. The 1% rule, thank you. Um, so the 1% rule is this idea that all I ever, when, when I started making massive gains in my life was when I started to go for tiny little growth every day. What happens is if you understand compounding interest, it's this fascinating phenomenon, they call it the eighth wonder of the world, that if you like an example of compounding interest, if you double a penny every day for 31 days, you'll have over $10 million, but you won't see the massive growth of that until like the last week or so, even a little later, like last five days, you'll see this huge spike. It's, that's where the quantum leap happens. And so the quantum leap happens through consistency. 
I've seen it in everything I've done. There's a little growth, little growth, little growth, little growth, little growth. And suddenly things start taking off. It's like the rocket, it finally gets off the ground because I got all these little one percents in place and now it's a powerful machine. If you look at the Beatles, they played in underground uh, uh, clubs for years and years and years and they worked their asses off. And then one day they were an overnight success. The compounding happened. So they really weren't an overnight success. There was the appearance of that and everything came to fruition. Think about how much work and how much subtleties and planning went into uh, uh, flying to the moon before we even got the rocket off the ground. How many people would talk and, the, and people had to get together and all the mastermind principle and the thinking and the, um, and the working to get all this, this stuff in place was so, uh, uh, it was prop went on for years and years and years before the day of the launch of the rocket. That was the point at which everything compounded to an upward cycle and everything took off. Um, so this is the first basis of releasing, understanding this 1% rule, applying this 1% rule in your life. Um, I highly recommend that you stop running around. I'll ask people all the time, did anything shift? I'm going to ask you guys this today. When you did that release, did anything shift? And you know, and you'll, or we'll do the release and you, and you say, I'll and actually, that's not what I say. I say, can you let this go? Can you let some of them? And you'll say, a little bit. And I'm like, but a little bit is a yes, right? Even if you only let go of 1%, you let go. That's still a yes. And what I notice is the mind has a tendency to discount little shifts and negate the power of them. But actually everything starts with a little shift. If you're going to make a human being, it starts with two tiny little dots that you can't see with the naked eye and they come together and make a baby. They grow into a baby and it takes nine months. In the beginning, you can't even see them. And they, 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 they just have to slowly start growing and growing, developing over time. But eventually, 18 years later, you've got a whole human adult. And when you think about it, that's really powerful because the growth rate speeds up and the change rate. So really adopt this 1% rule in every part of your life. Even with loving yourself, like, like, like um, Sam talked about yesterday, learning to love yourself 1% more each day, that's releasing in a nutshell. Now, to get to releasing, I want to, and this, is, this has a lot to do with releasing, so we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Might even rewrite it a little bit. Um, to get to releasing, I want to talk a little bit about Lester Levinson. Lester Levinson uh, is the guy who first came up with the idea of releasing. Um, amazing teacher. I've listened to an insane amount of audios of him talking because he didn't really write a book. There's a lot of transcripts of what he spoke about. He was a man who worked his whole life to be successful. He worked his ass off and everything he ever did failed. And he was angry and he was bitter and his life didn't work. And he got to about 41, I think it was. I might be off on it by a year or two. And uh, he had pushed himself so far and had so many failures that um, he ended up in the hospital for the who knows how many times, you know, and they'd always give him more medication and more antacids and things for take this and take that. And, and he's in the hospital and the doctor said, that's it. And he's like, what do you mean? He said, you, you're, you're not going to live much longer. You know, he had problems with his heart and all this stuff. And he said, you've got about two weeks to live. I'm guessing right around there. And he said, don't move, move as little as possible, stay in bed, get your affairs in order because you're not going to live much longer. And he sent him home and Lester went into this rage and um, this anger and he was really pissed off at the doctor. And he said to the doctor, I mean, he said, he didn't say the doctor, he went home and he was just like thinking how this doctor didn't care and how this doctor was, uh, it was cold and, and how you know his life sucked and, and how he didn't he didn't want to die and all this stuff was going on for him and so he gets home and he starts to study all these books he says you know what i want to do since i've only got two weeks to live he said my main goal he came up with was i want to be happy before i die he says i've never been truly happy in my entire life and i just really want to be happy before i die um hey jonathan um can you come out? I'm going to need a plug for one of these uh, phones. 
so that I don't run out of power on it. And uh, it's going to need a, 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 I think a USB type C cord. So if you can help me with that, I'd appreciate it. So um, I'm going to turn these off for now. And so he, um, he wanted to be happy before he died. So he started looking at all these books. I think he said he had two advanced degrees and he still could not find the answer. He's like, what is happiness? And he was looking at philosophy and all this stuff. And then he came to this other realization that, that he needed to just throw out the books. He said, you know, none of this is working. It's never worked. I've studied all these books my whole life and none of it's got me anywhere. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm not even gonna use a book. I'm just gonna ask my mind subconscious, my subconscious questions and see what it comes up with. And, um, and so what he did was he, uh, I need a USB type C for that. If, do you have one over here? Can you run to my apartment? It's a light cable. Just pull it off. There you go, bud. Thanks. Sorry, guys. Um, just wanna make sure I have some notes. I have two sets of notes here for you guys. Um, so what he did was he, um, he started to ask his subconscious mind questions. So what he asked his subconscious mind was, what is happiness? And that's a powerful question. What is happiness? And he said, uh, he wasn't sure. So he said, well, have I ever been happy in my life? And this is what I want you guys to really take in because I've thought about this a lot since learning this. So the next question was, I ever been happy? have I ever been happy in my life? And he said, yeah. He remembered being loved by this girl when he was young that he, he wanted to marry and, it, and it, it all fell apart but he remembered when she loved him he was happy so he deduced this idea that happiness was love and then he said but wait a minute when she didn't love me i was miserable when she broke up with me didn't love me so i can't control that he said hmm um and then she then he said what can I control? And he said, I can, when I would, the one thing I can control is being loving, giving away love. I can't control the love coming back at me, but I can control giving away love. And when I give away love and I'm really loving an animal, a person, a friend, and I'm just giving that love away, I'm happy. He said, interesting. So then he started going through his memories. Have I ever reached a point where I was being loving and I was happy in my life? And he isolated three memories. And this is where love becomes really important. He, he isolated three memories. One was when he was at camp with one of his best friends and they were setting up a tent and they were just spent all day talking, having this deep conversation. He said it was a really loving moment between them two and about it was depth and feeling and bonding. Another was when he was loving towards his girlfriend that had broken up with him, but he was loving her, not so much her loving him. And then there was one more, I can't remember what it was. And he sat with those memories for a bit. And he explored them, not logically, but viscerally with his heart, opened his heart and remembered what it felt like in those three moments to feel love. Now, I want you to note this. He remembered what it felt like in those key moments to feel loved. He explored those memories and he brought them to the present, sat in the feeling of, of the heart open, the vulnerability and the loving for somebody else. And he took time to do that, to understand what love felt like. Now, from there, he, 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 this is how releasing started. And this is the basic basis of all releasing. And an honest truth, I didn't get a, a formal course on releasing until after I've been doing it for a long time. And I actually found a formal course on releasing slowed me down because I kind of learned these ideas first and I just went nuts with it. And it changed my whole life. And um, so he sat there and he took this visceral feeling of love that he had found in his body. He was able to call, call up. And he said to himself, what's, a, what's something that's bothering me right now? Because he wanted to feel true happiness and love. And if he didn't have these memories coming up, he couldn't say, sustain it. So he said what was bothering him in the moment was the fact that this doctor had sent him home to die and this doctor was so cold. This doctor didn't care. So he started thinking about the doctor again. And, um, and so he he felt this rage and anger come up inside of him. And he was sitting with this rage and anger towards the doctor. And he said to himself, hmm, I wonder, just curiosity, can I, as he's feeling as this motion, change this rage and anger to love? Um, and suddenly 
his mind started to get angry and pushed back on the idea that's called reaction. He reacted like reaction formation and his mind reacted and said, no, that, that you can't do that. This guy was an asshole. He's, he's, he needs to be, he needs to suffer. You know, there was this, this like voice in his head telling him all this negative stuff, why he couldn't do it. And then he went, hold on. He started to talk to himself, his own voice, like we were doing yesterday, talking to yourself. And he said, can I, um, <clears throat> so getting a little distracted because we're doing some stuff here, getting the, the plugs plugged in properly. Can I just do it as an experiment? He said to his unconscious, his ego, can you just do it as an experiment? And if it doesn't work, we'll shift it back. Um, hey, Jonathan, can you drop the brightness on here a little bit? It went down when you unplugged it. Is that right? Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. So, um, so can I just do it as an experiment? And if it doesn't work, we'll switch it back. And his ego kind of settled down and he said he felt this clunk or burning sensation in his heart. And then suddenly <clears throat> he wasn't, didn't have rage towards the doctor anymore. He didn't have love, but he didn't have rage. And so as he's, as he's, as he's looking at the memory, the old feeling of the doctor, the memory was still there. The details were still there, but the way he looked at the memory had changed. And suddenly he didn't have rage, he had resentment, a lighter version of anger. And he's like, wow, now I just resent the doctor. I'm not hating him anymore. Um, and then the next thing he did was he said, okay, can I welcome this resentment feeling? And can I change this resentment feeling to love? And he asked, and he literally, you're asking the body this question, not your logical mind. Take the logical mind out. The logical mind's gonna say what it says but you feel what the body does in response to this question. And he said, suddenly the resentment dropped and he, had, and he felt that love, the heart open up towards the doctor. And his whole memory of the situation changed. He suddenly began to see the doctor in a new light. And, he, and the, it's like the memory, like all his projection onto the memory dropped and he saw it for what it really was. And what he really saw was a doctor that was scared that didn't know how to tell him he was dying. A doctor that was concerned but didn't know what to do. He was totally lost and felt guilty and ashamed. And what this did was it allowed him to see the truth of what the doctor was feeling because he, it wasn't clouded by his own internal stories about other people, about life, about how hard things are, about how people don't care. And then he started to have this appreciation for the doctor. He knew the doctor couldn't do anything, but he finally realized the doctor cared. And he said that changed everything in that moment. So that began Lester's quest. And Lester started a quest after that. Now it changed fast in two releases. That doesn't always happen, but it was a fresh memory. So that has a lot to do with it. it wasn't a deep rooted with tons of stories and layers around it. But, uh, and he was also under a lot of pressure. He was told he was dying. And the mind will, when, uh, when you're under massive amounts of pressure, lets go of, of repressed stories faster than when you're not, okay? So the mind started to let all this stuff go because in his mind, he didn't have much time yet, two weeks. So, um, so we use a lot of techniques to bring stuff up faster and faster and faster. So he started to release and let go um, 24 hours a day, every day. He started to shift his reality every day. He started, let me change something here. There we go. So he started to shift his reality um, every day, faster and faster and faster. He started to change things more and more. He started going through every memory he could find that in his past. He would bring up his ex-girlfriend. He would bring up his best friends. He would bring up whatever memories had these strong traumas on them. And I did the same thing. I started going through my life year by year by year. Anything that had any trauma, I would start doing releasing on. And then I go back and do it again because there'd be new layers and new layers. And he did this day in and day out, 24 hours a day, because he only had two weeks to live. And in his mind, I want to get to happiness. And what he was doing was trying to create love for all these old memories. Now think about this. We were talking about this yesterday. The more he can become loving towards all these old memories, the more his reality will shift. He said each day that he did this and he would do it, he'd sit in his lounge chair and do this all day long. And he said he'd fall asleep in the chair, wake up in the chair sometimes. And he said pretty soon his energy started rising. He started feeling better and better better he said he began to realize he was he was not going to die he actually lived to be almost 90 i think in the end 
Um, and because his body, his energy was returning. Now he wasn't trying to heal the body. He was trying or working on becoming happy, experiencing love in the moment. That's all he wanted to do. But he was really stuck on this. Uh, um, but he, he, but he was, but, but what, well, let me rephrase that. He was working on feeling love in the moment. That's all he really wanted to do. And what he ended up doing was healing the body because of all the love he was creating. See, the body was dying from all the anger and resentment and stored trauma in it. So the next thing he did was he's, when he started walking, he started taking these long walks. He was living in New York at the time. <clears throat> and he would walk around at anything that triggered him. While he was walking, he would release on so he'd be walking down the street, maybe somebody honks a car horn really loud and it gets annoying and he starts to release on that until he can have love towards that car horn and that person. Or this person rides too close on a bicycle or somebody yells something out. He just kept doing that all day long too. And he, and, and he just kept, I think he called those tendencies, releasing on tendencies. And there was this, this sense of constant shifting from judging everything outside of himself, making everything wrong and then pushing it away, pushing and pulling on life, to loving life. Lester used to say that I'm getting all the push out of me so the, so the world stops pushing back. So he's getting all the push out of him so the world stops pushing back. Because as long as you have a lot of push in you, and all of you think about this, this is very obvious. When you're out pushing on the world, does the world not push back? If you go into a bar and you start yelling at people, you, they're going to yell back. You get angry at people, they're going to get angry back. You swing at somebody, they're probably going to swing back. Or if they don't and that person cowers, somebody else will. Something is going to happen. That's going to be a reaction that happens in life. So you want to get all that push out of you. And then life starts to get into more of a flow state. Now, you're going to notice, if you notice what Sam was talking about yesterday, the more you get into your heart and flow from your heart and relax into your heart and move from your heart and are just loving, the more the world wants to give to you from that love. And this is what Lester began to realize. So Lester began this releasing process and it just went on and on and on. And he, uh, he said the toughest release, one of the toughest releases he had to do was on his ex-girlfriend. He said he got to the memory of his ex-girlfriend leaving him for another guy. And he said, and this other guy that I think he knew or something like that. And he said, that was the toughest release I ever had to do. He said, well, the goal was not just to release and be okay with it for him because he wanted complete love all the time. His goal was to get to the point where if she really didn't want to be with him and she wanted to be with this other guy, that he could, and that's her choice, that he could have love for her and him as a couple and wish the, and have, and have just nothing but heartfelt emotions for them to being happy together. That was his goal. I wanted to see if she didn't want to be with me, I wanted to reach a point where I had love for them too as a couple and I could appreciate it. Cause he's, cause in reality, there's nothing stopping me from loving her, whether I'm with her or not. I don't need to possess her to love her. And I, and I don't need him to agree with me to love him. So he said, can I reach that point? He said, it seemed utterly impossible. And he said, the hardest part of that was when he pictured them two having sex together and trying to release to the point where he had love for both of them, even when they were having sex together, creating pleasure for each other in his mind. And he, 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 you know, he was excluded from that, but there was a sense of him just creating an image to stimulate the, the part of his subconscious mind that would go into resistance to this pain. He wanted to bring up the emotion. And so what he ended up doing was feeling that fully and then working on it. He said it was the longest, it was really long, a lot of work to do this. He had a, there was a lot of stories he had to let go of deep down inside, you know, about life and how things worked. And, and when he finally got there, he was like, oh my God, he felt so free. So much more powerful. So much more alive. Because he wasn't being pulled and angry, pushed by this old memory anymore was free of it and he just started to feel love for the world and the world started to love him back and then the amazing thing started to happen not only did his body heal but everything in his life started to change he'd worked so hard to be successful for so long and suddenly success started coming to him with ease suddenly uh, health came was, his health was really solid uh, the right people would show up at the right time literally he took the push out of life and life stopped pushing back and started becoming really giving um, and, um, and so that's, that's literally what happened to him. Now I'm going to relate that to my story. I several a while back spent about a year or so doing a lot of releasing. I thought I was dying, but I wasn't dying, but I was going through a lot of emotions. 
and I did an insane amount of releasing every day, kind of like Lester did it 24 hours a day. I did a lot, three hours, five hours, eight hours a day, whatever, or days I just went all day and did a massive healing of my body and my mindset. At the end of that, as I was coming out of that, there was so many synchronicities happening. I would think of something and the person would show up. I would, I would think about this, that, or the other, and something would happen. And as I came out of that, my whole life, and I started to want to get back to work again, my whole life took off. Naturally, business started to flow in. I started to teach in a new way. I started to have more love and compassion in everything I did. And I watched everything just blossom. It's been blossoming ever since. More and more answers were coming to me. Um, one after another after another. My whole life radically shifted because of this. And, um, and so I've been applying and deepening these principles ever since, coming to a deeper understanding. Now, if you really want to understand letting go and releasing, you know, we have workshops and seminars, but there's also, you could start with a letting go book by David Hawkins. I think it's a phenomenal book. Hawkins was a student of Lester, even though they don't talk about it. Uh, he was a direct student of Lester's. And then there's the Sedona Method book by Hale Waskin, who was also a direct student of Lester's, which, they do, which he does talk about that. And those two books are completely different perspectives of the same technique. Then there's you know, Lester's original way of doing it, which I've done a lot of research on, which was much simpler than, uh, than a lot of people think, um, from what I can tell. And then there was the way I did it when I first learned it, which, which caused me to cause so many releases. And I, I look at it, it was very similar to what Lester originally did, because I would just welcome and let go. And I would look for, I wouldn't obsess over it. I didn't make it hard. Whatever came up when I welcomed, if I could get a one one millionth of a percent of a release, I was like, celebrate, I get it and celebrate it because I'd feel the expansion. I'd do it again, I'd do it again, I'd do it again. I just kept going inside. I got to the point where I'd be driving down the street and I'm just popping releases out. I'm taking a walk and I'm popping releases out. Then I sit and meditate for an hour and I'm popping releases out. I got to the point where my body was heating up, like the yogis talk about, like my gut was so warm because I was doing a lot of releases on my gut for healing that I could just sit in the bliss state of that heated body for like an 30 minutes an hour after I was done releasing, just feel it pumping through my body. It was an amazing experience for me. And so we're going to get into that process and how that worked next. But that's in a nutshell, uh, the story of how releasing came to be is this idea that the ego is a machine that talks constantly. We we're talking about this yesterday. And it likes to, you know, like think about when you guys go to approach a girl or a girl goes to go on a date or for the women out there, it's, you know, it, it, let's say for example, for a guy approaching a girl or for a girl going on a date, the first step is, you know, you should go out with this, this, uh, you should go, you should go meet her. That girl's cute. You should talk to her. What? You don't have the courage. Well, you don't have the balls. Go do it, man. You can do it. You're, 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 you're it's like this guy on your shoulder telling you to do this thing. So then you start moving in that direction to talk to that girl. And then what does the ego do? it switches gears suddenly, like, like just turns on you on a dime. It's a moment ago, it was telling you to go over there, the voice in your head. And then the next moment, the voice in your head starts telling you, what are you doing? Don't do this. She's going to reject you. You're going to be, you're, you're going to be hurt. You're going to, you know, this has never worked out for you in the past. You're a loser. And then what happens is you start to feel that energy build up. And when that energy builds up, you turn around and run the other direction again and you run away. And then what does your mind do? It says, why did you do that? You know, you, you should have talked to her. Why didn't you talk to her? You're a loser. You, should, you God, you're a chicken. You always do this. You always run away. So no matter what you do, you can't win. That voice is not you. That voice is a product of the emotion stored in your body, which is the basis of releasing. The basis of releasing is getting all of these emotions that are pushing and pulling on you out of your body. So they, so, and then what happens is the voices start to diminish. They start to go away. Um, or the feelings. If you're a feeling person, it's the feeling starts to diminish because you're getting all these emotions out of your body. The emotions, according to Lester, were just a program that we basically live in bliss states all the time. Um, if we weren't, if we were in a deep meditative trance, and no matter what's going on in the world, you go into a bliss state. So the natural state of the human body is peace and love and joy. And anything less than that is a restriction of that peace, love, and joy. It's the closing off of this flow of emotions, natural flow state. We talk about flow or being in the zone. That's when we're just letting everything flow naturally through us. 
And as soon as we start to close off and kink that, kink that, it starts to feel heavier and heavier and heavier. So if you're clear up here in peace and acceptance and courage, and then suddenly you start to feel sad or angry or resentful, then what happens is every kink in that hose starts to create restriction and starts to, the water, let's imagine a hose and the water wants to flow, but now it's being pushed on by a kink. And each kink starts moving you farther down the scale. So you're all the way down to apathy, completely closed off hose, and you can't feel the water moving through it anymore. It's just numbed out because it's, just, it's, it's and then you have the other end of the spigot and nothing's coming out. Nothing's coming out to express itself. So what Lester did is he wanted to completely get that back to that low and the love, which is at the top. And he wanted to give that away. He wanted it to come out the other end of the hose. So he had to allow and get all the kinks out, which was all the stories stored in the body. We have tons and tons and tons of stories which are driven by programs underneath, which are just thoughts and emotions stuck together. So I want you to think about this for a minute. If you have the thought, I don't like myself, I'm a bad person, or I should be punished for doing that, or I shouldn't have done that, or that person, you know, something like that. And then there's a negative emotion attached to it, grief, anger, fear, something like that. Would that thought even be there or could it continue to exist or would it even have any power over you if the emotion wasn't there? If there was no anger, if there was no doubt, there was no worry, no, it couldn't exist. If you got rid of all these lower emotions, and that's a, quite a feat because that would put you, move you towards enlightenment, but you know, you, it's not that it can't be done. Lester did it in like three months. Um, but that he was dying, you know, but we can still do it. We just have to do a lot of work to, to let it all go to bring, we have to do stuff to stimulate it up and let it out. But as he got up to the higher emotions, those voices start to disappear and the head gets more quiet and the ego starts to relax and you, you don't, and, and you don't need a huge ego anymore. Hawkins, I think said that the difference between an enlightened person and an unenlightened person is the, the amount of fixed beliefs. The, the unenlightened person has tons and tons and tons of fixed beliefs about how life should be and they're dogmatic and they're, and they're pushing and fighting against those beliefs. The enlightened person only has a few fixed beliefs and they have a, a minimal ego to function in the world. And that allows them to flow. Most of their beliefs are fluid. They adjust to the moment or the time when the, and they can see and they can let beliefs go easily and bring new ones in because, because they understand that, 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 that it's seeing is not believing, but believing is seeing. So they adjust their beliefs to, to create the best experience possible. And so releasing is untying all the places that you fixed your beliefs, that you, you've, made, you've gotten them stuck. So that's kind of the basis of release. Here's the emotional scale. Now, the reason I have this up here is because it's really, really, uh, it's very important. Um, our natural state of being is at the top and that's peace. And um, actually, in, and if you look at Lester, Lester says the ultimate state of being, his version of enlightenment, he didn't call it enlightenment, he called it imperturbability. And that would be the I at the top. So I'm going to modify this thing a little bit. And we're going to write a new one. And we're going to write it a little different for this class. So that you guys, um... And by the way, if any of you saw this class, the levels of consciousness, as you go through each level, that's what you're fighting against. You're fighting against all those lower emotions. That's, and the breakdown, the breakthrough is the lower, the fixed belief dying and a new, more fluid or new fixed belief, depending on your level of consciousness, taking its place. Um, so if you haven't seen that class, go back and check it out. That was a really good class. Um, you can reference that possibly here. So I'm going to write this a little more like Hawkins. Uh, I really like Hawkins' work. So apathy, this is the numbness, the shutting down. The, the, so a lot of people say in apathy, they can't feel anything. And that's because it's an overload of emotion. It's like a circuit breaker has got so much electricity and energy going through it, it pops and you can't feel anymore. And so we have to reset that circuit breaker. Grief. Actually, some some uh, some stuff, some some synonyms with apathy would be uh, pointlessness, uh, deep boredom, numbness. Uh, uh, what's the use? It'll never work. These are the types of thoughts you have. There's tons of emotions that go with it. If you look in Letting Go or Sedona Method, there's tons of what they do is they write out all the subtle emotions that go with it. Okay, 
but it's a little bit much for this right now. And we get into that in the, in the workshops. We really explore each subtle emotion so you can get a really deep understanding of what they feel like so you can stop taking them personal and then you can start to let them go. So grief, um, grief is, is the opposite of apathy almost. It's in some ways. It's this, in apathy, you completely shut down emotion. In grief, you're in a lot of pain. This thing's gonna fall over. Uh, grief, you're in a lot of pain and a lot of emotion. That's the, the emotion of crying. This is the emotion of uh, when you're crying, you're facing a fixed attachment and it's like owning you. And so you want to break up those fixed attachments, okay? Um, and you want to let them go. So like if you're breaking up with your girlfriend, a lot of times we go into grief, there's crying, or boyfriend, there's crying. You lose a, a loved pet, beloved pet, there can be a lot of uh, um, crying in that too. And so um, a lot of emotions in that too. So hopefully I'm trying not to cut off my head, but at the same time, I want to make sure you can see all this. And so that's, a, uh, that's what the grief is. So, and then, so when grief becomes too much, let's say you break up with your girlfriend, lose your pets, lose a family member, and you can't handle it and you have no way to process that information, a lot of times we go down to apathy to numb out so you don't live your whole life in grief. Um, the numbness is a form of protection from uh, the inability to process the grief, okay? So all of these have a purpose for the, for the human being. I'm going to rewrite this. Okay, so there's grief. Apathy, grief, and then we have fear. Okay, so fear, anxiety, worry, doubt, nervousness. This is the core emotion um, apathy, grief, fear, that really kind of, that, that, that kind of drives a lot of our behaviors. A lot of people are chronically afraid. So one of the things that happens is, uh, is, is one of the chronic fears that controls us is guilt. Uh, we have a lot of guilt in our lives. Matter of fact, you know, throughout life, we're typically feeling guilty more than we realize. If you're going down the street, and you're crossing the street illegally, like say you're jaywalking, or you're not even crossing the street illegally, you're just walking the street and see a police car, how many of you get nervous and say, oh, am I breaking any laws? Do you get worried? That's guilt. You bump into somebody in line and you're suddenly like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's guilt. Now, it's not that you can't say I'm sorry, but where does it come from? If you bump into somebody in line and you say I'm sorry because you respect them as a human being, but you don't feel guilty, that's fine. But if there's any part of you that feels like you did something bad, that's the guilt. Guilt engenders fear because there's a, a need to be punished in guilt. So guilt is a really common emotion that goes with fear. And that typically owns it. So we're gonna give a little short emotional uh, understanding of this. Apathy, grief, fear, lust. And by the way, anxiety is another important one to understand in fear. Anxiety is this, is this static energy. It's like, the, it's like the static on a radio, you can't quite get the signal. It's when everything becomes so like the nerve endings in your body become so charged, you're just like, your mind is racing. So you wanna get down from the static to clear fears to release. You can't release, it's really hard to release when you're in that static in, in what we call the spins. Okay, then um, lust is wanting, chasing, needing, craving. I'm lusting, I gotta get it. So there's this sense of energy. So if I'm talking to you and I'm like, you guys get it, you guys get it, you get there's a sense of wanting you to get it and it pushes you away. If I walk up to a girl to ask her out on a date, I'm like, hi, my name's Brian, what's yours? Where are you from? There's a, there's a push in that. And then, then she wants to push back and say no. But if I get the lust out and I just enjoy her, and stop, and like stop chasing, that's what lust is, and just stop, appreciate, and enjoy, that pulls somebody towards you. And then it's like, hi, my name's Brian, what's yours? And to do that, you have to let go of all attachment to outcome because that's what creates the lust, this desire to get a specific outcome. Um, the next thing we have is uh, lust, anger. Screwed this one up too. I'm probably going to rewrite this whole thing. Anger and then pride. Okay, so lust and then anger is, is this desire to lash out, to attack. To, to, to go at somebody and like you're wrong and there's a sense of wanting to punish somebody else. So revenge, things like that are in there. Resentment and uh, it's reactive. It's like when you lose control of anger, it's reactive and that's what gets you in trouble. Uh, proactive use of anger 
is to say, how can I use this anger constructively in a proactive way to like, I'm angry, I'm gonna relax and, and use this anger to face my own fear to grow. Because I have, because anger is usually in response to not wanting to face the fear. And then you use the anger to face your fear, burn off the fear and you grow and you become more powerful. And so that's how, how anger works. And what anger does is the moment you take anger and you say, I'm gonna use it proactively, it actually moves right up to courage. And courage is right about pride. Pride is all about uh, uh, striking out. Okay. Uh, pride is uh, win, lose. So the pride is the idea that there's a winner and a loser and I'm going to be the winner. Or it could be that I'm going to be the loser because I always lose and that's my lot in life. And you get a certain sense of pride out of how broken your life is. There's a lot of people like that out there too. Oh, you don't know what I've been through. Look at what my life. You see, there's a winner and a loser. And so by losing, you win in that second scenario. That's, that's how you control people, by making them listen to how hard your life is. Uh, Donald Trump is a great example who has a lot of pride. It's all about winner and loser with him. And I, we're going to be the winner. Or I'm going to be the winner, you know. A um, lot of athletes, you know, the, the, the top athletes in the world are heavy on pride. You can make a lot of money and you can be very successful from pride if you're good at, at, at managing the winning side. Problem with it is it invites attack because by the nature of you seeing winning and losing all through the world, you create a lot of uh, attack. A lot of people want to come back and argue with you. You'll see that with Trump a lot. He's a great example of that. Um, and uh, I kind of like Trump. I think he's very good at playing the pr at pride, but I wouldn't want to live his life. It's too much stress, man. Too much shit coming at you because they're always going to fight. And Richard Branson, who's more on the courage side, is, is where I'm more interested. So courage is win-win. It's a sense that we can do it. Let's all do it. Let's figure out a solution for all of us. And if you think about it, anger, pride, and courage are all intense energies, which is powerful energies. And they're all going to go make stuff happen. And, but anger is going to do it reactively. I'm going to, you know, I lose control to it. I'm going to make something happen. Pride is going to do it as in I'm going to win. And, you, and I, I don't care who loses. Courage is we're going to win. Let's all make this happen. And the intensity in courage is, 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 a, is a real proactive giving type of energy. And then we go up to acceptance. And acceptance is this idea of once you have experienced courage and you said, let's all go out and do it. Let's say you, we all go out and we play a game together and we support each other like a tough mutter and we like, and it's all, it's all over. After the game's over, we can naturally go into acceptance. We did that. Yes, we work together. And that's what we're heading towards a lot with this coronavirus is we're all working together, the whole world, with, through courage to face the situation, the biggest mastermind in the world. And I believe we're going to be start heading towards more and more towards acceptance uh, and, and change and growth in this area. At least a lot of people, not everybody, are going to have that potential. Okay? And so acceptance is, is, is it's just, it is what it is. And, and, and it's beautiful. And, it's, and I can... I can sit in, in, in a sense of just relaxation and, and uh, lovingness. So there's a lot of loving and acceptance. And then Hawkins likes to put love right here. And I'm going to write both of these up here. So once you hit acceptance, then, and this is, the old, this is what we do to begin releasing. We play in the acceptance category. Once you hit acceptance, you can naturally go into love. Because once you accept something for the way it is, and you stop trying to change it, make it different, which is all about pride typically, or some lower emotion, then you can just open your heart like Lester did and have love for it. And then that brings you to a natural state of peace. And that's what we're working towards in releasing. In releasing, we start by acknowledging the resistance, which is down here somewhere. And we do that with courage. And then from acknowledging the resistance with courage, we automatically start to accept it. And then we move up to a sense of acceptance for it. And then once we can see that, let's say we're angry and we can accept the fact that we're angry and we're okay with that, 
we have the courage to look at it and keep accepting it, these two are bouncing back and forth, then we can release it. And once we start to release it, we can start to transmute the anger towards, uh, the anger itself starts to turn into literal acceptance, then love, and then you create peace around that. And you do that over and over again, creating more and more space in your life. And, and that process kind of bounces around like that. But that, that's just one example. But what you're doing is processing these lower emotions and getting what Lester would call this an ag flap. Apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride. So you can see each letter, ag flap. And you're getting the ag flap out and you're using this, this is where you want to spend. If you get to where you just like, let's, let's, let's throw out that whole idea of enlightenment for a minute. If you can spend 80% of your time up here, you're gonna have an amazing life. And most of the world spends 80% of their time somewhere down here with only bouts of being up here. Like when they watch their favorite TV show, when they're hanging out with a good friend and drinking a beer, what if the bulk of your life was up here and occasionally you went down here. That would change everything, wouldn't it? And that's the power of releasing. So let's get to literal releasing um, and, and some of the techniques we can use. Just want to make sure everybody's understanding this though. Um, um, is everybody quick in the comment section? Is everybody getting what I'm talking about so far? Is this all making sense to you? I had a few scribbles on the board. Awesome. Good, 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 good. Okay. Perfect. A lot of yeses. I love it. Um, good. I'm all, uh, that's, <laughs> you guys rock, man. Um, not precisely. I see one not precisely in there. So, uh, uh, Isa, can you, do you have a question about any of it really quick that I can answer before we moved on? This will be, the recording will be up uh, at some point. Uh, somebody wrote that they missed the beginning. So you can, you can watch it all from the beginning again. So if you missed part of it, watch it over. I'd say watch this one several times to get an understanding. And this is a real basic overview of releasing. Remember, we'll spend a minimum of three days to a week to really embed these principles into your body and start to be able to really use it to change your reality. And it starts to change. Literally, the thoughts in your mind start to change the more you release with the, with the open heart, like we were talking about yesterday. You start to t speak to yourself more lovingly. You start to see stressful situations in a more beautiful way. You start to process information faster. It doesn't mean that there's stuff not going on, but you start to look at your shit, which is down here from up here, rather than being down here trying to get up there. And that's the mistake most of the world makes. Most of the world is primarily down here trying to release to get up there. What we're saying is learn to be up here primarily and then start letting go of everything that's down here while living more and more from up here. Okay. Um, so uh, that's good. Now I'm going to, I don't see where Issa's answer is, but Issa, if you want to write it in the Q and a, uh, we'll get to the, your, some of your question and we can watch it over again later. Um, okay. Okay, so I see a lot of great questions. Um, I'm not going to get into them yet. I just want to take a quick look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain basic releasing and then we'll go from there. Now, Hawkins doesn't give you any questions. He just basically says, welcome whatever emotion you're feeling. And remember, there's, there's not one emotion here. How many ways can you, what are synonyms to fear? Anxiety, worry, doubt, uh, things like this, okay? Uh, synonyms to apathy, bored, depressed, shut down, pointless, you know, you can, you could feel the heaviness of the words that match. You can see that they all have a theme. And I, I just went through what the theme is. And so you can start to see where the theme is. And you're going to notice that these go from heaviest to lightest. So when you release, you don't necessarily release in order. I'm going to say that again. You don't necessarily release in order. You release, you can bounce around. This is only so you can see that, that this point is the heaviest energy, at that point is the lightest energy. Okay, so Hawkins will just say, welcome the motion. And you don't even need to say the words, just welcome internally, like open your heart. And I want everybody to do this for a moment. Just sit back and ask your heart, don't make it, don't think. Turn off the thinking and turn on the senses. You have five senses you're aware of. So turn on the senses. Right now I can hear some birds in the distance singing, 
There's a beautiful sun outside visually. I can feel my, the weight of my body on the chair. So I turn on the senses and then I ask the heart to open and I notice my body's response to that. I welcome that response. I don't make it open. I don't use imagination to open it. I ask it to open. And then I let the awareness of what this part of my body's doing come to my consciousness, come to my awareness. And I feel this little warmth of opening that receives the bird singing. So that's the, that's the part of the hose where I'm receiving energy in. I'm feeling the birds. And then I can give energy back to them and appreciate them. The energy I'm giving back to them is appreciation. So that's just allowing me to get into the now. I'm actually dropping in and asking the heart to open and just sitting with it. Some of you may or may not be able to do this right away. It may take some work for a bit. You may have to do a bunch of releasing before it starts to make sense. Um, and we'll talk about that too. Um, so just notice what it feels like to feel your body for a moment. And then what I want you to do is, is I want to begin a releasing process, whatever is going on right now for you. And so we're going to, just going to go through one really quick and then we're going to talk about it. So again, sit in your body and ask your heart to open. Just feel your heart as much as you can. And whatever you feel is perfectly fine. Also begin to feel your legs and the weight of the chair. Begin to notice the sounds in the distance. And then whatever's coming up for you, I want you to welcome it, acknowledge it, allow it kind of like up here and welcome the courage it takes to feel it for a moment just welcome what you're feeling and notice what that feels like even even if you're feeling anxiety or fear doubt worry welcome it notice it's just a feeling it can't kill you so again welcome the now feeling and sit with it for a moment And now I want to ask you, as you're welcoming the now feeling and sitting with it, it's just a feeling, it can't hurt you, no matter what it is, if it's good or bad. And whether it's good or a heavier emotion, can you let some of it go? Can you let all of it go? Can you let 1% of it go? It doesn't matter. There's no right answer. Good. And can you let some more go? And can you let some more go? And even a bit more. Now again, begin to welcome the now feeling, the sensation you're feeling right now. And it's okay to let go of good emotions. They only come back stronger. So welcome the now feeling again. And just notice what it is. What is your now feeling? Is it apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride, courage, acceptance, love, peace, or some variation of that? Just acknowledge it and notice that you can handle it. It can't hurt you. It's just a feeling. And sit with that for a moment. Even if your mind is wanting to get away or wanting to go in a different direction, is making it personal, making it something that you shouldn't look at this, just watch all that happen whatever is going on and just welcome it. And now I'm going to ask you again, can you let it go? Whatever it is, heavy or light, can you just let it go? Give it to the world, give it away. And can you let more of it go? And even more of it go. And can you let even a bit more go? And now for those of you that noticed the release, or even if you didn't, welcome the space that was created by doing that release. If it was only 1%, welcome that 1%. Allow it to be beautiful. Just sit in it for a moment and then welcome more of it. And maybe you're experiencing more courage or more love. Welcome that. And then welcome a bit more. And a bit more, and a bit more. Again, now go back and notice what emotion you're feeling in your body. Just kind of scan your body and welcome whatever's there. And just notice where you're at currently. Apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride, courage, acceptance, love, peace. And welcome that emotion. And whatever comes up, there's no right, there's no wrong. You can use a synonym, it doesn't matter. Good. 
good, good. Notice it's just a feeling. You can handle it. It can't hurt you. Just welcome that feeling. Good. Now ask yourself, can you let it go? Can you let it all go? Can you let 1% of it go somewhere in between? And even if you feel just a hair lighter, acknowledge that. Yes, that's a release. That is letting go. And then let a little more go and maybe you feel another hair lighter and a little more go and maybe a hair lighter and some more go. And if your mind ever says no, welcome that too. No, let it say no. No, I'm not going to let any go. Let it, let it do that. And then welcome that. A lot of times that no ends up being a release anyways. Good, 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 good. And now if any space that was created from that release, any more love, courage, acceptance, peace, just welcome that. And welcome it some more and some more. You see, each release creates a little more courage. So let's welcome more courage now. And can you welcome more courage and more courage? And can you let courage expand, even if it's just a hair in the body? And can, you get the, and can the courage get even better now and even better? Good. Now let that go too. Can you let that go and give that courage away to the world? Because anything you give away only comes back to feed you more. So just let it go so it can create a nice cycle where it goes out and comes back even stronger and stronger. Good. Now, this is a basic release. It's a basic idea of releasing. We weren't focusing on any particular topic or anything you had to work on. We're just playing with the basics. Whatever's coming up in the now. And notice, it's very simple. All you're doing is welcoming and sitting with it for a moment and noticing that you can handle it. It's no big deal. And then releasing some or all of it. And that's it. And then you don't have to, depending on where you're at, if you're a really positive person. But if you, if you have a tendency to focus on the negative, you might want to acknowledge some of the space and the love you've created by doing that release. Or the courage you've created, whatever feels good to you. And then go back and welcome again. Welcome the new now feeling. Then let it go. And then you can welcome the, the expansion of your courage again or your love that's created from that. And then you do it again. And that's the way I see releasing flow for most people. The reason I do that, that a lot of people don't, don't do the piece where you welcome more. And what I want to do is get you in the habit early on of acknowledging the growth of this area up here. Because what I notice is a lot of people don't acknowledge that area. They just try to release down here. And what happens is they get stuck down here because their mind keeps constantly focusing down here and by law of relativity they get stuck down there um, and so what we want to do is after we let some of this go we want to acknowledge the expansion of up here showing the subconscious mind that we're moving from here to here over and over until this becomes habitual eventually you won't need to look at this as much because the natural release here you'll naturally go here you'll naturally feel an expansion up there but in the beginning really kind of stick with that I still constantly go back and welcome and allow this area. And I get in touch with it. I explore memories of it. I, I, I explore gratitude, love, peace, just like Lester did. I'll go explore memories of love because the more I have a visceral experience of up here, the easier it is to let go down here. So a lot of my releasing now is done by accessing up here and then looking down here and letting go of what's down here, okay? Um, so that's the basic idea. So what we're going to do is, is I use questions. Sometimes I just feel it. I feel acceptance. I feel a release and I don't even use questions. That's more of a Hawkins stuff. And that is very common. But if you need to use questions in the beginning, use them. Uh, the ones I just used is, uh, and I'm going to write them down for you, is can you... Welcome the 
now feeling? Can you welcome the now feeling? Not a feeling that was from the past. Feeling to see the words that you might have to do a zoom in or something at one point so they can see what you wrote. Um, well, I uh, we'll try and do our best. I'll put this here. Let's see here. Or they can just follow along and take notes what you say verbally. But can you see? Can you guys see that? No. It's just washed out by the light. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, yeah. There's no blinds in this room, so. Let's try to move this forward and see if it works. But then I have to go to the right. So if you guys can see that, I'm going to pin it up on my screen to see what it looks like. There we go. Yeah, we're getting comments that um, it's visible now. OK. So can you welcome the now feeling? That is the first question I'll ask. And, um, and so the key here is welcome. Uh, what are synonyms to welcome? Can you acknowledge? Can you accept? Sometimes I get better. If, well, if I'm feeling resistance to the word welcome, I'll say, can I accept? Can I allow? Um, and all I'm doing there is, is this whole idea of can I be in the moment with the now feeling long enough for me to get used to feeling it, okay? And so I'll change up my wording sometimes. Sometimes I have to do a release on releasing itself to get releasing. Because when if I get resistance to this word, I'll release on that word. Can I welcome my now feeling of resistance to the word welcome? And then release that. And then boom, welcome feels lighter again. Okay. The next question I'll ask is, can I... Um, if you can welcome it, Can I, I'm going to write slash you, let it go? And then, can I let more go? And so what I look for here it's just a, a tiny little sliver or a huge amount, doesn't matter, whatever releases. But even if it's a tiny little sliver, 1%, that's all I need. Boom, can I let more go? And can I let a little bit more go? And pretty soon what starts to happen is there's this, I just feel a hair lighter, hair lighter, hair lighter. Sometimes a huge release has happened and it's a ton lighter. But as long as I'm feeling a bit lighter and a bit lighter, I'm growing, I'm moving in the right direction. And more go, okay? And then you can do and more. The next thing I like to do, so this is two parts. This is the welcoming part, allowing, uh, accepting, if you wanna use the scale, okay? The next piece is I take a moment to acknowledge any lighter feeling, whether that's courage, acceptance, love, peace. I feel an expansion of, or an openness. I take a moment to I acknowledge. Hey, Brian, these guys were chiming in. They actually could see it okay. Um, and right now you're at the bottom of the screen, so you can actually back it up a little bit if you want to. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can see it clearly what I'm writing, so I'm adjusting to it now. Okay. Uh, acknowledge, that was a poor writing, but you guys know what it is. Acknowledge um, I'll just say, this is more of a concept. Acknowledge the expansion. So what that means when you acknowledge the expansion is if you feel more courage being created, and you, then can I welcome the, the expanded feeling of courage? If you feel more love, can I welcome the greater feeling of love? If I just feel lighter, can I welcome the feeling of being lighter? You know, and then, or can I acknowledge the feeling of being lighter? Can I, and then I can start again and do it again, okay? And there's many ways to do this. Um, this is just one set of words, okay? We're, and another set of words, and we're gonna get deeper into this in a moment, uh, if you look at the Sedona method, they like to do it a little differently. 
is they will say, um, they do the part with the, the uh, can I welcome the now feeling? And then it's, can you let it go? The next part is, um, would you let it go? And the next part is when. If you could let it go, when would you let it go? And then I always like to acknowledge again. The growth or expansion, we'll say growth. The lighter feeling. And that's another way to say it. Okay, so these are the basic principles. Now I wanna, and we're gonna get into, we're gonna do an example with somebody so you can see it a little bit better. Um, because this is not a thinking process. I'm gonna back this up so I can sit down again. Hopefully everybody's seeing it okay. Um, this is a feeling-based process. So what you're looking for is feeling. Now, uh, I, highly, uh, I think it was uh, Hale DeWaskin once said that that in the beginning he couldn't, he would do this process, but he couldn't feel anything. And somebody asked him, why did he keep doing it? He kept asking the questions, can I let it go? Yes, would I let it go? Yes, when? And he's like, I didn't feel anything, but it just felt like I'd say yes. And he said, this went on for a while. And somebody said, why did you keep doing it? And he said, because the more I did this, I would welcome the now feeling of whatever I was working on. The, uh, and the more I went through this process, the more my life would change, even though I couldn't feel anything changing. The external world started to change around me and it was amazing to watch. So I just did it every day. And then he said one day he did a release and his whole life changed. He could feel from head to toe and he could feel every release since then. Um, sometimes you'll ask these questions and your mind will come up with a distinct no, or even I've even heard fuck no, or no, I'm not gonna do it. That's the anger, because you're hitting anger. Let your mind say no, say it out loud. No, fuck no, no. I found that most of the time when, you, when you're congruent with what your mind is saying, like I say, can I let it go? No. Would you let it go? No. When? Right now. Oh, I just got a release. What'll happen a lot of times is if you say no, and usually it's right when you say no, can I let it go? No, you still get a little lighter because you're not fighting it. You're like, no, I don't wanna let it go. And then you kind of laugh inside and then you get a release. So, um, so can I let it go? No. Okay, good. No, I'm not going to do it. And then boom, lighter again. And so saying no isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and so I want to, I want to ask you, tell you guys that that is a, that that is a perfectly okay response. And I have to say it over and over and over again, because when I go to release with people, inevitably they won't do that. And then I have to guide them into the nose and then they start getting good releases until they start getting good yeses again. Um, so that's one thing that's important. Um, so, uh, so hopefully you're getting this concept. Now, how do you use this for specific goals, problems, situations, traumas, whatever's coming up? Um, <clears throat> you bring up in your mind the problem, whatever it is. Like maybe it's, let's, let's say it's a, um, uh, A fear, let, let me think of a real one that I've, I've done it on. Um, I've played with it with releasing for, for approaching the talking to girls. And I'll welcome the now feeling. I'll think about approaching a girl. Maybe I'll go do a couple approaches where I do a couple conversations and I'm anxious now. And then I'll welcome the now feeling. It's better if I can even go do a little bit, even if it's the minute maximum I can do. And then I sit down and shut my eyes somewhere and I welcome the now feeling that's coming up as I think about that memory. 
and then I feel fear and anxiety, and can I let that go? I welcome it first, and then um, I sit with it for a moment, notice it doesn't bother me, and then I go, can I let it go? Yes. I feel a tad lighter. Would I let it go? No. Fuck no. Oh, that feels good to say. I feel a tad lighter. When would I let it go? If you could let it go, when would you let it go? Now. Ah, oh, it even feels better. Now I feel my gut more, and it's literally working on me right now. And then now I feel a little expanded. I just acknowledge that expansion for a moment and sit with it. And then even right now, I'm feeling a little resistance to the expansion, so I just let that go. I didn't have to go through the whole thing. And then now I just dropped into my body more. Then I go back to the top. What's the now feeling? And the now feeling's changed. Maybe right now I feel at peace. I can go through this with peace if I want and just let the peace expand. Or I can just sit in peace. But maybe it just got a little lighter. It went from anxiety and maybe now I'm feeling some anger that came up in its place. Because the emotions will change as you go through the different layers, like layers of cake. And so now I think about the memory again and now I feel some anger. Can I welcome the now feeling of being angry? And so I sit in that now feeling for a moment. Notice I can handle it, it's just an emotion. <sighs> then I start to till I feel into my body, okay? Can I let it go? Yes. Would I let it go? <laughs> yes. And then there's a smile and a laughter because it feels good. And when would I let it go, right? There was resistance there, but I just released the resistance. Now, now I'd let it go. And then I sit there and go, can I, and I acknowledge the lighter feeling. Then I'm going to ask myself really quick, because it's fun to ask, can it get any better than this? Because it feels pretty good right now. And yes, it can. Now I feel more tingles in my legs and feet. It feels really good. And then I sit with that. Okay. So this is the basics of asking and releasing questions. It gets a lot more complex. We can do, there's, when you get into some really deep stuff, we can do a lot of stuff. But with this alone, you can change your whole life if you just keep going through this cycle over and over and over again. This is actually the basic cycle. You just gotta identify the now feeling and whatever you're working on, whatever feeling, problem, or something like that, okay? So, um, so what I want to do is we've looked at two sets of questions. We've talked about how it works. I want, I want to explain that releasing for a lot of you can be an intellectual concept and it doesn't work when it's intellectual. So for releasing, when you let something go, it's like I'm holding this, this marker. And let's say I'm holding on to you. I'll think of something. Um, the re desire for you guys to understand it. A want, which is in the middle of the emotional scale, right? the lusting, the wanting for you guys to understand what I'm teaching. And I can feel it. And if I, if I let my hand grip at the level that I want that, I can feel the tension in my hand holding on to this idea that I'm going to figure out how to get them to get it. They're going to get it. And the problem with wanting is wanting pushes away what you want because you can't want something and have it. I'm going to say that again. You can't want something and have it. So to have something, the best thing I can do is let go of the want so that I can let the ha feeling of having in. So I'm holding on to this marker and I'm really wanting you to understand. And I want to switch it to the feeling of having. Okay. So the key to that is I got to release the want, relax where I'm tightening in the body. And so the hand is synonymous with wherever I'm tightening in the body. Can I let go of that want? And the key is I'm going to start to loosen my hand at the speed I'm, I'm letting go of the want for you guys to understand it. What happens is, as I let go of the want for you guys to understand it, I feel lighter, calmer, more open in my body, and my hand naturally opens, do you see? I don't have to do anything. It's not like I'm forcing my hand open, I'm relaxing my hand open till the marker would fall. And that's releasing of attachment. It's actually the doing less. So another way to say it, would be instead of can I let it go and what I've been playing with more and more lately is uh, can I relax and just let it and let it flow let it or soften and let it flow can I relax and let this flow again and these are new words I'm playing with because I find 
can I let it go it makes people often think of doing an activity and we don't want to do an activity. We want to say the words that are going to make us do less. Can I relax right now in whatever area is holding on to this and just let it and let it flow. Can I relax and let it, let it go, not make it go. See, that's the difference is a lot of people interpret the word letting go for making it go. Um, so that's the, the basics of the releasing questions. Um, is there anybody on the panel that has something they want to let go of, uh, that I can use as a demo, something small, like if we had a scale of one to 10, 10 being, I can barely handle this emotion. One being it's really light, zero being none, something one, two, three, or four. And that's where I recommend everybody start, start with the one, two, threes, and fours, do tons of one easy releases get them under your belt like crazy. Like I had one guy in a workshop said he was annoyed by the scooters going around the neighborhood. Everybody's on these electric scooters and he hated them. So he went out and did some releasing on the scooters and he came back and he said, they don't bother me anymore. I'm perfectly okay with this. this is amazing. Um, so little things like that. That's where you start. Don't start with the big trauma from your childhood. Work your way up to that. Okay. And then you're going to want to take that in pieces. It's going to come like if you have this huge trauma you've had for years, you're going to be breaking it down. It, the component parts a little bit at a time. You're going to look at that, your anger towards it, and maybe a piece of your anger and your frustration, and maybe how you feel guilty about not having done something specific, and you're going to start breaking it down. And you're, whatever now feeling comes up is what you're going to work with. So on the panel, Josh, Anna, uh, Sam, Anthony, anybody up there, does anybody have something they can work with, with me on? Sure, man. I want things to go back to normal. I want people to be outside. Oh, that's a good one. Good one. Okay. Uh, so can you welcome that feeling right now? Is that a, is that a, a low feeling? Is that a one, two, three, or four? It doesn't really matter if it is. We're going to work with it anyways. But yeah, it's probably, it's probably about four or five. Okay. So we're going to start with easy stuff. Okay. Can you, can you welcome the now feeling of wanting that change? Yeah, sure. Good. Now I'm going to say something a little bit more. Can you welcome all the thoughts, images, feelings, sensations that come with that? We're going to add that piece in. Yeah, yeah. Good. Now, can you let it go? <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to let it go as I said that. <laughs> yeah. so you got a nice release. That was the laughter. <laughs> Would you let it go? Yes. And when? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> it's a hard one. It's a hard one to let go. Okay, good. Is it all gone all together? You said. Yeah, it, realistically, yeah. It's like like when I'm thinking about it now. There's not this uh, push on it anymore. This pull from it. Okay, good. So it's like down to a one or a zero or. Yeah, yeah. It's more like it is what it is. Okay, cool. So that's an example of a release. Now, laughter is beautiful, and it's great that Anthony demonstrated that because that's one of the, the keys out from Anthony. We were doing releases before, and he was resisting them because he wouldn't say no. And Anthony figured out when we were in Romania that when he said no and fuck no, he would get amazing releases. And he started to feel lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. So uh, we're not going to quit trying to tell people what they want to hear and just say what, what, what your body feels like it needs to say. And then notice if you feel lighter at all, if you can't feel anything, just keep doing it for a while and see if there starts to be changes in your external world. Uh, thank you, Anthony. That was awesome. That was an easy release too. Um, now there's a lot of addendums we can do with this. There's a lot of other pieces we can add to this guys. Um, a lot of other questions we can ask and, and to go deeper and to play with deeper stuff. Well, what I'd really like to see is you guys take these basic sets of questions that we, we, we put on the, on the board here, the two different sets, and just practice releasing different things. Welcome the feeling. If you've got Hawkins book or Sedona method, you can look at the emotion list and you can say, what's the now feeling? You don't have to say the ones that are on the chart here. I'm gonna come back to that. Um, this is the other chart. Love should be in here right here if we're using Hawkins. But you don't have to use it. You could say lust, you could say desire, craving, needing, chasing, anger, rage, resentment, hate. Um, so you can find an emotion that really matches what you're feeling. What is the now feeling? Anger, rage, it's, it's actually rage. And then welcome that. Maybe then it goes down to anger the next time. And then maybe then it goes down to 
you did it and you start to feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm better than everybody else. I can do this. So you go into pride and there's a part of pride or arrogance. Might be arrogance is a good word. And then you, you welcome it again and say, can I, you can even ask, can I turn that arrogance into courage? Can I change it like Lester did? And I've used that one a lot too. And boom, next thing you know, it's courage. The key here is that you're asking your body to make the changes and you're not thinking about them. And then you're observing the effect it has on your body. And the more you do this, the more you're untying the push in your body so that the world stops pushing back. And every little bit of, of emotion you let go of, like imagine how many emotions you have attached to fear, how many thoughts, excuse me, you have attached to fear. You probably have a ton of thoughts attached to fear. And as you let go of more and more and more and more fear, a lot of those thoughts are going to start fading. I'll give you one more exercise. You can work on a specific problem, but you can also work on a specific emotion. I've literally gone through the emotions and the emotion lists and I'll just sit there and say, can I welcome fear? Can I let it go? Can I welcome more fear? Can I let it go? Can I welcome the courage that's expanding? And I'll just play with that for a while and keep doing it. And, and I'll work directly on any feeling of fear that's in my body today. Maybe it doesn't happen and not, this, not a specific situation. The number one thing for growth in your life is you can work on a specific area like approaching women and things like that. But the number one thing I see for releasing is when you work primarily on just being happy now or up in cap now. If you just work every day, whenever you're out of cap, to get back to cap, no matter what's going on in your life, a lot of your problems are going to start to fade. The more you start residing in cap primarily from day to day, and this is where you're developing a morning ritual or a process around this, where every day we do a practice around this and we learn to stay in cap all the time, the more all the stuff you want in life is just going to start coming to you because you're living up here. This, is the, this up here is the magnetic space when there's no more push and everything you want in life comes to you. So the real key isn't going out and saying, I'm miserable day to day, but I'm going to get, in, I'm going to release into cap around approaching women. That can happen. I've seen people, they're miserable day to day and they're only in cap when they're out flirting. And then they get addicted to flirting because they want to be in cap all the time. What if you just released and got in cap no matter what you're doing and then let everything else come to you? And that's the key. Um, so this is a basic process. I'm trying to teach something that I teach over three, I'm gonna get better at teaching this in an hour, but I'm trying to teach something that I, I usually teach over, and this is an hour and a half already, uh, over many days um, in an hour. And this is the first time I've ever tried to squeeze a real basic concept into an hour. So I wanna ask you guys really quickly, uh, are you getting some usable information out of this that you can at least go home and get started with? And we can do, we'll do more calls on this and I'll do more, so a few more calls where I'll go a little deeper into some of these principles. Okay, good. I want you guys to play with this and then write questions on the Facebook page. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Perfectly. Good. I, I, feel, I feel like I've conveyed it well. Uh, and write questions on the Facebook page. Really start to communicate what your questions are. And, and as we do more calls, we can go a little deeper into this. We can start to play more with these principles and stuff like that. I love all the yeses. It makes me feel really good inside, guys. You're moving me into cap, guys. A um, little validation. Okay, uh, so now what I wanna do is I wanna take, since we took a little longer with this, I wanna take a little time and I wanna play with uh, questions that are coming up. I know we only did one example. Uh, what I'd also like to do is, is do some more examples around this too. And um, what we'll probably do is on the next call, I'll probably do a whole bunch more examples around this. Um, so let's look at the questions. Um, actually, let's do one more example, then we'll do the questions. Um, does anybody else have something they want to work on that's on the panel right now? Um, that they can release that's a one, two, three. And so we're going to start with those one, twos, and threes. Nobody on the panel, huh? Mike, Cairo, Jonathan. Oh. I'll jump in. Yeah, please. What do you got? Something around um, the amount of work that I perceive I have and in the amount of time I have to do it. My days are a little overwhelmed right now. There's resist, there's uh, ah. 
Uh, so I'm, it just jumped in my head, so I don't really have anything planned. Okay. Can you welcome the now feeling? We're gonna keep it pretty basic, but can you welcome the now feeling around all this work? Yes. Okay, what's the now feeling out of curiosity? Um, it's right now it's like high in my chest. It's kind of a tightness. Okay. Uh, I feel a little dizzy just thinking about it. On an emotional level, so it's, is, is there overwhelm? Yeah, that's overwhelm, yeah. Okay, good. So can you welcome the now feeling of overwhelm? And anything that comes up with it, the tightness, the dizziness. So we're really, uh, for everybody out there, we're acknowledging the whole gamut of feelings. Good. Yeah, it's right there at the surface. Awesome. Awesome. Now notice it's just a feeling and you can handle it. I always like to let people feel it for a second so that they can start to realize it doesn't have as much power over them as they thought it did. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that causes the release itself. So he's already starting to smile. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I don't feel so personalized right now. Felt personal before now. Good. Now, can you can you let it go? No. Okay, good. No. Would you let it go? Yeah. Yeah, I feel light about it. Would. Yeah. Okay, good. Do you feel lighter at even saying would out of curiosity? Sure. Yeah, I do. So that means there was a release in the wood. Um, and when would you let it go? If you could let it go, just a feeling, right? When would you let it go? Not now, but like mm, this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you just got a release? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So by saying this evening, he got a release now because yeah. he was congruent with what he said. Yeah. Good. So when you look back at this feeling of overwhelm, do you still feel the, the feeling of overwhelm? It feels a little soft, softer. Good, good. A little softer, yeah. Okay. Can you welcome the now feeling of overwhelm as much as it is it's there, even if it's lighter? No, oh, yeah. Yeah, but it feels different. <laughs> good, good. Notice all the how it feels different and where it's at. Yeah. And can you let it go? Or can you even let 1% go? Sometimes I ask that, depending on if I see they're in resistance. Yeah. Okay. Can you let more of it go? Yeah, it shifted in kind of this sad, sad feeling, I guess. Just turned into something else. Can you let more of it go? Good. Good. That's good for now. We can, and... Can you acknowledge, can you welcome the idea that there's more than enough time? This would be something that I'd be a little more advanced, but we're just gonna play with it for a sec. Can you welcome the idea that there's more than enough time? Yeah, it feels a little more expansive. Good, good, good. Now, can you welcome the new now feeling? It's different, you said sadness, right? So now we're playing with a different feeling. Yeah, but even that, I just got a lot lighter on. Okay, good. What's the now feeling now? Possibilities. Okay. So would you say you're feeling, but uh, would you say you're in cap now? Yeah, I feel a little courage coming up. A little, I can like, I can, whatever it is, I can handle it. Okay. Can you welcome the now feeling of courage, the win-win that comes with that? Fuck yeah. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you accept the now feeling of courage? <laughs> That's always a tough one. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, why not? That's what I feel right now. Yeah, do you feel lighter now? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Do you see how his energy, everybody started to expand and he started to get bigger? And so we can start playing with different sentences like that as we get more um, into it. I played with a few different sentences, or you can just use the basics. People have changed their whole life just going through the basic over and over and over and over again. And, um, and as we get more advanced, we can, again, we can start going after whole programs and we can start going after core wants and there's deeper stuff that goes on. But the first thing you got to do is get good at releasing little things. This is, I'm going to say this one more time. 
get good at releasing the little things day to day so you live 80% of the time throughout your day as much as you can getting back to cap over and over and over again not even that's before your goals if you can live 70 80 percent of your day in cap your life will change radically and it'll be a thousand times easier to get your goals okay guys so i want you to hear that over and over and over again so many people only release on their goals and they don't release on their moment to moment awareness of the day living a decent life living a good life just being happy walking down the street, getting their groceries, um, getting up in the morning, take, you know, they rush, 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 and they don't, they don't stop. That is the key to have to releasing into an amazing life is your day to day and then releasing on your goals. Okay. Um, so we're going to leave this at this point or way over, but I'm going to do some Q and a for a bit. Cause I want to get, always want to get Q and a in. So I'm going to grab that. We've got more than enough questions. So I'm going to try to rush through these. Um, hi, Brian. How, this is from Mario. Uh, Mario's. Maros. This is from Maros. Oh, Maros. That's, I saw Mario at first. Um, hi, Brian. Uh, how we can let go and release on the fear of being alone. Um, I keep having these thoughts that make me sad that I need to be with someone in order to feel happy and complete in my life. First thing I'd say, Maros, is can you welcome fully the feeling of being alone? And I don't think you have yet. And it's going to be sad and lonely and heavy. And the key to really good releasing is great welcoming. I'm actually going to probably change the name to the fearless version to the welcoming process. Because when you can welcome the emotion and stop making it wrong or right, good or bad, and just sit in it and start to see the beauty in the sadness, and start to let go of the attachment and the aversion to the sadness, then you can start to let it go. So some people who are really averse, avoiding a feeling, sometimes I'll tell them to welcome for 24 hours to a week, you know, just sit with the emotion and don't release it at all. I've given people the assignment to welcome for a month straight. They were obsessed with getting releases. That has been some of the most profound changes in people I've ever seen when they just welcome everything. The welcoming process the releasing is simple when you do phenomenal welcoming and, uh, and, and just keep welcoming all those thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I'd say, try it for the next 20. You're pretty good. You're pretty good at feeling most of the time tomorrow. So try it for the next 24 hours. Just welcome the feeling of being alone. Don't do anything to avoid it. Don't do anything to run from it. Just sit in it and see if you can re uh, welcome even the part of you that makes it right or wrong. Uh, Vic, Sedona Method talks about releasing on financial problems as well as other problems. How can, we re how, can, how can releasing help me to get financially better? Well, every problem in your life, financial or otherwise, is related to a set of thoughts that are attached to a set of emotions that make up programs. So your story about money has a bunch of, like when you think about money, what thoughts and emotions come up? You can literally write them down. Money doesn't grow on trees. It's hard to make. You have to work really hard. Rich people suck. You know, all this type of stuff. What's your story about money in and of itself? If you had $10,000 in your hand or $100,000 in your hand, how would you feel? Would you feel anxious, nervous, excited? Would you go into a race wanting to do something? Would you want to spend it right away? Start getting in touch with these feelings. Um, if you can get a hold of a large sum of money, notice how it makes you feel. I remember the first time one of my rich friends back when I was poor handed me uh, $14,000 in cash and asked me to carry it in my pocket all day for him. He wanted me to get used to experiencing cash and large sums of money. And it was an odd feeling. I had this wad of money in my pocket and I was, we were driving to Las Vegas and, um, and I had this, and I kept thinking, what if somebody robs us? What if, you know, all these weird thoughts came up in my mind. What if cops pull us over and take it out? And he just didn't, he was like, whatever. You know, this guy was making over a hundred thousand a month in his income at the time. And he was just like, it's not a big deal, man. It's just don't see it as a big deal. And, start, and, and so that was a welcoming process for me before I even understood what a welcoming process was. And then once you see the stories, you can start to release on them. You can, you can welcome each story up, each thought. You can welcome up the feeling of um, <clears throat> money doesn't grow on trees. Can I welcome the now feeling when I say that? What's the now feeling that drives it? The feeling gives it the fuel. So you might feel something in your body, which might lead to an emotion. 
and you can welcome all of that and then you can release on that and see if you can do and you can even put numbers next to each one of them each story about money 10 being this is i can barely handle looking at this down to zero that this doesn't bother me at all and you can start to watch every time you do the go through the h1 each day and each day you'll start to see those numbers decrease until eventually there's zeros on all of them and watch how your money reality starts changing okay Vic? um tomahawk uh, hi guys i've been feeling my lower abdomen a lot over the last two days and it feels incredibly numb so much so that the only way i can communicate with others sometimes is if i come out of my body and into my head is this normal any advice moving forward i don't want to remain quiet forever but at the same time i feel more connected to myself through that feeling than going up into my head and avoid it. i would let yourself you got to keep staying in it. It won't stay that way. It can't. But what, what you're experiencing in your lower abdomen is, is some form of numbness or and on the emotional scale is apathy, at the bottom of the emotional scale. But it feels better than being in your head because in your head, you're completely avoiding that area. And, in your, and that's no fun. So you're actually getting better by going into the numbness and being confused for a little bit. The confusion is the first stage. The next stage is starting to get some awareness where the confusion starts to clear up and then the releasing will start to happen. Um, you're having, and when you're in numbness, it's hard to release sometimes. And sometimes you just got to welcome for a little bit. <clears throat> or you can start releasing micro bits of it. Like we talked about the 1% rule. Imagine you're releasing one ten thousandths or one one hundred thousandths of a bit of numbness a day uh, at a release, not a day, at a release. But the, trust me, that number will increase really fast. It's exponential, so it starts to go up like this. Because if you can get little micro releases out of the numbness just a little bit at a time and sit in it for the next few days, what will happen is it'll start to pick up speed. And as you go up the emotional scale, it'll pick up more speed, more speed, more speed. And that's exactly how I did it. When I felt a lot of numbness in my, especially in my turn on area, I felt one little speck of, of warmth in that area one day. And I just kept sitting with it and it turned into two specks and three specks. And I kept welcoming the new feeling until eventually my whole, that whole area of my body was alive and awake. Okay. Um, Gary. Hey, Gary. What's up, buddy? Brian, when you come to uh, techniques, can you tell me which one you find the most useful? Uh, the straw, the funnel, visualizing. So these are different techniques for releasing. I didn't teach here because, um, because um, they get there in the more advanced course that Gary took. Um, and it would take a long time. But we can imagine like a straw. Like if you got numbness here, we'll talk to... Um, down in the lower abdomen like tomahawk talked about you can put like a little straw in that area and ask it to release you might feel something coming out the straw you might feel nothing but nothing is something so you just let nothing come out of it whatever happens happens remember you're getting rid of all the trying to make something to happen um so i don't find necessarily one technique better than another gary i find i am really loyal to feeling so if I try a technique and it doesn't work, I switch to an, and I feel resistance to it. And another one I feel open with, I'm going to use the one that I'm open to in that moment. In the next moment, it may be different. Now, out of all those techniques you just mentioned, I've used the straw a lot. Um, and I've used uh, 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 visualizing open a lot. And I've used them in conjunction with each other a lot. I'll open with a sh visualize opening that center, that chakra, and then put a straw in there. And that's very common. But uh, one of the things I was going to say for you, Gary, is you want to practice um, getting loyal to what causes you to feel more vulnerability, especially in your heart. Because I think part of the reason you, have to, you get stuck with releasing is you start to do it from your head and you close your heart. So what I'd really love to see is you spend a week or so practicing getting, opening your heart and feeling more vulnerable. You might, and if you really get it open, you might start experiencing tears and a little bit of crying just for no reason. You'll be like, why am I even crying right now? And that's normal as we start to open our heart if that happens. If it doesn't and you just feel this beauty around you, that's also your heart. Open. So I'd really recommend you can play with the straw and the opening in the heart every day for 5, 10, 20, 30 minutes and just see what happens. But see uh, about uh, that and then welcome whatever's there, let it go. And I would do it in different environments. Start in a nice, beautiful, safe place like your home, but then go out and do it when you start to get good at it, do it uh, sitting on a street corner that's nice, sit in the park and then eventually in a coffee shop and see if you can start letting that heart radiate and touch people around you. Um, and that'll help you to get out of thinking about your releases so much. And when you start to get the heart really turned on, feeling your releases, which you're gonna get a lot more results from. 
Um, great question, by the way. Daniel, Brian, do you think it can be more effective to do small 1% releasing every day than doing loads of releasing each day? I've been releasing in an obsessive way and keep getting annoyed at myself because often I don't actually feel like releasing. Yes, you don't. I don't want to associate releasing with pain. So I want consistency first, uh, quality and consistency first, quantity second. So one day I may do 10 minutes, the next day I may do an hour. Now, with that said, there is an exception to that rule. Let's say you've got some, you got a serious illness and you got a big motivator and there's a lot of pain and releasing all day may be the very thing. But in general, if you're just going into massive resistance for releasing, what do you do to get rid of that resistance? Um, another thing you can do is really every day, if you're going to do a lot every day, I always say once a week, but I'd say for somebody that's releasing a lot every day, release on releasing every day, start by, you know, or somewhere in the, throughout the day, release on any stories you're developing around releasing. Cause the moment you get really resistance to releasing, you're developing a story or an experience with the releasing. And then if you do that two or three times, that becomes, starts to become a program in the mind to experience resistance to releasing or whatever technique you're using. This could happen to any technique. So by releasing on all the stories you have about releasing every day, it starts to get more fluid and flowing again. And that's something I always need to remind myself because I forget to do that myself, but it changes the releasing experience pretty drastically when you do that. Um, but yeah, quality, uh, and consistency then quantity and if you release on the releasing every day and you start to enjoy it again you might find you naturally want to do more but don't but if you're doing the releasing if you're doing a lot of it out of an extreme want to get somewhere then I would be releasing on that extreme want getting that want to get somewhere out of my system because you're going to get somewhere faster when you don't want to get there you just choose it you you you, you know you're going to get there and so there's a sense of trust and peace in your body um, Daniel again, uh, to add to my question, I find it hard to let go of the feeling I have to master or complete everything right now. So that's something you can release on right there. Just release on the, the matter of fact, re, don't just release on the feeling to get master something or get awesome at it. Welcome the feeling of being incomplete and being happy, screwing things up and being happy, doing it wrong and seeing the beauty and, and learning from that. Welcome those types of feelings because there is no complete. So you're chasing something that's endless. Matter of fact, the, the more you learn, the less you know. So, the, so, uh, so you'll experience that as you learn more and more, you're gonna understand less and less. Uh, Philip, uh, I don't remember a lot of memories of my past. Would you say that uh, they are suppressed? Can I bring them back to, re to release? It's possible. Yeah, one way to find out. I know my friend Daniel claimed he could remember his birth because he meditated so much for so long. He'd meditate all day long. Uh, he actually ended up in, in, a, in a weird situation where he had nothing to do all day and he was stuck in a, in a situation. So he would just meditate. And he said he started to remember his birth and everything. They say we have everything in the subconscious mind. It's all in there. It can be remembered if you can get deep enough into it. So, um, and uh, as I've released, I've had a lot of memories come up, but I wouldn't obsess over them. I wouldn't, you know, just keep releasing and what'll happen is as that stuff's supposed to come up, it'll probably come up as needed and to be released as you start to get more control over your life and things like that and start to feel safer. Um, anonymous, can I get over my sexual shame by releasing? It can help drastically, yes. Uh, if you have something like um, stamina secrets or you're doing some exercises from, um, from um, one of David Day's books like the Enlightened Sex Manual or things like this or you, a sexual shame and you start to move and rotate your pelvis and your hip and you start to bring up more and more um, of that energy that's in the pelvis, then you can also, after you've done that, you've stirred that energy up, you can sit down and then release on whatever's come up. And that's a great way, whether stories, feelings, emotions, you can literally do work, do a bunch of movement on the sexual center, um, the rotating of the pelvis and all that kind of stuff, then journal all the feelings and stories and thoughts that come up and then release them. And uh, that could be huge. Um, I've also done straight releasing on my pelvis and my turn on and my cock and, and all that stuff and had huge success in that area and growth, but it has to be done consistently. That's an area that almost everybody resists 
uh, a lot. So it has to be done consistently until you start to get really light down there and start to enjoy your turn on and you and see it as creative energy that you give to the world to, to help grow the world. Roger, um, can I control my thoughts when I'm meditating, especially on a particular part of the body? Uh, sacral chakra, but I always have music playing in my head. Should I try to release on the music playing in the head or should I try to see if the particular song in my head at the moment is subconscious mind speaking to me? Oh, I can control my thoughts when I'm meditating, especially on a particular part of the body, i.e. the sacral chakra, but I always have music playing in my head. I'd experiment with it. I mean, I, if the, you're enjoying it and you feel good and you're in nap, I don't see it as a huge problem, but you can release on it and see what happens. And if you don't like the way it feels, you can bring it back. You can oscillate between the two. But ultimately remember, um, as we get more and more silent inside, we typically get happier outside and healthier too. Um, <clears throat> hey, Brian, do you have a, do you have to climb the emotional school scale with each inner story or you want to be in a good state before you release center stories. I typically go more and more for a good state before I release the stories. In other words, there's two parts of me. There's the physical part, which can be sad, but then there's the emotional and energetic. There's more than two parts, actually. Emotional part, energetic part, which are typically uh, higher in the emotional scale. So I identify more with the energetic self. And then I look at the part of my body, maybe I'm tight or numb in the pelvis, but in general, uh, I start releasing on that area to get it caught up with the way I feel inside. Now, if you're not really well identified with the energetic self, that'll be tough. Um, but I always recommend, can you, this is why I say, you know, get in touch with that part of yourself that's naturally in cap, learn to feel good, and then go work on the deep stuff. And so you'll probably, and if the deep stuff's really dark, you'll probably go down the scale while you're working on it, then come back out and raise yourself out of the problem, whatever you're working on, and bring yourself back up, um, release, listen to good music, dance a little bit and then come back and do it again and do more releasing. And that's, that's a great process to use. <clears throat> uh, please explain love a bit more. And we're going to, we're going to end by uh, one o'clock. This is a long one. Uh, please explain love a bit more uh, and how, uh, excuse me, lust a bit more and how it pushes women away. Lust pushes women away because the nature of lusting, wanting, chasing, desiring is that you don't have, you can't lust and you're not going to be, wanting and have. You want a drink of water because you don't have a drink of water. You want a certain meal because you don't have it. As soon as you're having it, you're not wanting it, you're enjoying it, you're being one with it. And so you want them to be able to bring something into your life. It's okay to want it at first, but then you need to be able to switch it into having, into enjoying, into uh, uh, the, the sense of the, that, that you're one with it now. And that's, that's where people make the mistake. They keep wanting and they amplify the want and they amplify the want and they never switch to the feeling of the sensation of having. If you explore when you've had something and when you've wanted something, they're very different feelings. And you'll also notice when you wanted something and you went and got it, that you naturally went from the feeling of wanting to the feeling of choice, you're going to go get it, to the feeling of expectancy, it's coming, to the feeling of having it. And that's the, that the, we go through those cycle of feelings when we bring something into our life. And so being able to identify in your body, the sensations you experience with each one of those helps you to make that transition naturally and easily. Because if you keep amplifying the want, but you can't move to choice and expectancy, then what'll happen is the want will start to become more and more painful. And then you'll push the very thing you want away. Okay. Um, Igor, I think a very important bit is remembering to focus on doing all of this because you enjoy the possibility of the result, not to avoid uncomfortable parts of life. Yeah, well, you, you don't, the uncomfortable parts of life are where your power is. If you turn the, if you get comfortable with the uncomfortable parts of life, you become so immensely powerful in, in your ability to create. And, um, and you don't get the, don't, don't worry about getting a goal. Learn, point, pick a goal that, create, that will force you to have all the experiences you want in life, you know, because it's the experiences on the way to the goal that are so valuable. That's what we're living life for. We're not living life for the goal. We're living life for all the experiences we have getting the goal. And that's where life is lived. Each goal, you'll always be setting new goals as soon as you get them. So, um, 
Okay, another Philip. Hey, Brian, how do you bring up stories in your subconscious when you're not applying pressure through external action? Visualization is great. Yeah, if you can visualize and make it seem super real, it'll bring stuff up. Asking questions is great. You know, what am I feeling right now? What's my current thought? When I think of, um, you know, uh, energetic modeling, which we didn't teach on this call, but it's, just, it's, it's like visualization where you're, you're creating like a 3D holodeck and you're opening your eyes and you're seeing everything around you and you're walking through the steps. Um, discussing it with somebody else, journaling about what are your feelings about it. And, but, uh, but try to get into the now when you visualize as much as possible, just like, uh, um, just like uh, energetic modeling. Picture it, at, not in the future, not in the past, not in an alternate world, but now, because that's where you're gonna feel the most pressure, like as if I'm painting a 3D image of talking to this person right in front of me, and that person is the person that triggers me. And I can see into their eyes, I can see, and then watch all the feelings that come up and then see if you can associate better and better feelings with that each day. Um, Omar, I just noticed the similarity. Uh, you can also uh, watch TV shows and read books that, that are on the topic and see what emotions come up to. I just noticed the similarity between ag flap and the seven deadly sins. Greed, lust, wrath, sloth, gluttony, pride, envy. Yeah, they, we've been playing with these. There's different versions of emotional scales that people have out there, and they're all valuable to some degree. You know, I take them with a grain of salt. It's not given rule, but it's it's a basic concept that works and helps you to grow. And um, and so, and a lot of those old religious teachings have a lot of, have a lot of value if you sort through them. Some of the stories are insane when you when you break them down as as far as teachings go. Um, Brian, hey, Brian writes, hey, Brian, is it possible to just not bother labeling the emotions at all and just focus on the bodily sensation while releasing? Yeah, yeah, I'd say, because the emotions are, are a label uh, for the bodily sensation. So you can definitely do that. Get down to the feeling level. Sometimes I find when I look at the emotion, I get a better release. Sometimes when I look at the, the feeling, I get a better release. Sometimes I look at the thought and the emotion together, I get a better release. Whatever gets me the release you know and everybody's different so notice what your body and what your body likes to do today it might want to do tomorrow differently okay mario how does apathy feel like oh that's that's like you know it's so subjective mario um everybody's a little different so um you know apathy for me can feel like numbness lack of feeling uh, this, and there's thoughts. I always hear the thoughts. This isn't going to work. What's the point? I give up. There's no, there's no use. Um, it's a sense that nothing I do is going to change anything. And those, those thoughts will, uh, are, are attached to those emotions. Those are the thoughts that come up when you have the apathetic emotions. And so that gives you that sense of apathy. Um, this total sense of overwhelm, pointlessness, your mind's racing and you can't get a feeling at all. Sometimes there's a lot of apathy in that. Um, lack of feeling. Uh, Jonas Herb, uh, do, do only positive emotions come back again stronger? And if so, why? Why don't negative emotions come back stronger when you let go of them? Positive emotions come back stronger is one way to put it, but lighter. So when you release a negative emotion, it tends to get lighter. So if you release courage and it gets lighter, it's going to go to uh, acceptance, it's going to go to peace, it's going to start heading more and more up the emotional scale into more bliss states. So it's the same thing with the lower emotions. If I keep releasing on apathy, I can, I'll get different le levels of apathy, lighter, and less apathy. Maybe it'll intensify for a bit, and then eventually it moves up the emotional scale to something else, and, and you'll, you'll eventually keep releasing, getting lighter and lighter and lighter until you get to peace. So that's why. So you don't, you don't really need to hold on to anything. The less you hold on to anything, the more it comes back in an enough service back to you. It's like if I water my garden, my garden grows and gives me all kinds of uh, vegetables to, um, to eat. But I have to, I have to give out the water. I have to move it through the hose. I have to move all the kinks and let the flow happen, and it comes back to me. Okay, and um, each kink I remove allows the the water to be stronger and allows it. See what I mean? So it's kind of a, a weird idea there, metaphor, but it, but it, I think it illustrates the point. Omer, I think it is. Um, how do I? How to let go of feeling of crush for someone? Well, you first got to welcome the feeling of crush. Can you welcome the feeling of crush? Can you let yourself feel what it's like to have a crush? Can you feel the wanting in the crush? You know, all, everything, the, the now, all the now feelings, the wanting, the needing, the chasing, the desire, 
or the sadness, if it, that's there, the fear, maybe there's sadness you don't have, maybe there's fear you'll never get them. And then once you feel those and identify those emotions, you can start releasing on each individual emotion as they come up, what's the strongest and start working with that. And you'll see the others will change as you release each one and then the next one and then the next one until eventually um, you'll, it's not that the crush will necessarily go away and maybe it will, but you might just end up loving and appreciating the person but not needing or not needing or not needing them. It's just like, yeah, I can really enjoy this person. And if, if something happens, great. And if something doesn't happen, great. Because you're releasing the attachment and the aversion to the crush. You're releasing the desire to go, I have to have this person to be happy. I have many crushes to all kinds of people that I don't date. And I just enjoy the, the little chemistry and the dance and the flow and it's fun. But I don't make it something I have to go get that person, you know? And that's because I, 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 I know that there's, I always know there's going to be somebody for me out there or somebody else if I'm not with a certain person. And eh, so it works. Ike Love wrote, yes. And I think we're running out of time. It's one one So, um, uh, hey, Brian, does letting go increase confidence and reduce insecurity? The simple answer is yes, yes, yes. The more you do it, the more confident, the more self-esteem, the more vulnerable and happy. So like you can handle your vulnerabilities. Uh, the more you can just, life is just amazing. Um, okay, guys, sorry, I can't get to all these. I tried to race through them as fast as I could, but you guys kept adding more. So um, this is a two hour call, so I've got to end it sometime. It's been a great call. Um, I'll, I'll continue and deepen this. Make sure you uh, let us know what you thought of it. Uh, and, uh, and again, I want to invite you guys to invite more people to these calls, share them. If you're getting a lot of value out of them, share them because we want to create as much value as we can in the world. And, and, uh, if we all keep sharing the love, you know, this Corona stuff will be gone in no time. And you guys can release on all the Corona stuff. And thank you for all the awesome comments. I see them right now and they're beautiful. You guys are awesome. Um, to, tomorrow we're off, right guys. And then the next day is Josh is going to be on. Um, now I want to talk about this for a moment why we still got a bunch of you on the call. Don't hang up anybody. Josh is going to be coming on and this is great releasing opportunity. Perfect releasing opportunity. Josh is going to come on. We're going to be talking about your finances during this COVID-19 crisis and getting a picture on your finances and, and just getting a realistic understanding of what's going on. And, and so he's got a little homework for you, but I want you to know this is a releasing gold. If you guys want to get in touch with your money reality, uh, being able to look at your finances and stay in cap or even get a little higher on the emotional scale is fucking huge for that, for this. I, it's, you know, I used to, I remember when I used to look at my finances and just about cry because I would be stressed out so much and now it's no big deal. So learn, I highly recommend as many of you participate in this process as possible and learn and release and learn to laugh at your finances, learn to just like, this is no big deal because it isn't. The more you actually see it that way and you're unattached, the faster you'll turn, you'll, you'll create more. Even if you've got a lot now, you'll create more and more and more and your whole reality will change and you'll get happier and more abundant and just amazing things will happen, okay? So, uh, so if you guys are gonna be on the call tomorrow, right in the box, I'm gonna be on the call. Even if you're just gonna listen and release and not even pull up your phone, whatever you're gonna do, be on the call and listen and just write down all the, st the, st the shit that comes up and just say so that you have releasing material. Even if it's, all you can do is listen because I'm nervous. I don't even know that I can participate. I'm just going to listen and perfect. That's what we want. Thanks, guys. Um, so, Josh. By the way, Brian, calls Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Not tomorrow. Tuesday. Tuesday, guys. Tuesday 11. So, what, what did you want to tell them, Josh? Uh, all right, guys. So, we have a break tomorrow, and uh, it's scheduled that way because we're going to give you some homework. Okay. So, if you want to get the most out of the call on Tuesday, here's what you're going to do either later today or tomorrow. Okay. I want you to go look at your financial situation. So, look at both your cash inflows and outflows. All right. The inflows is any, any cash receipt. For most of you, it's going to be a paycheck, uh, if you've got a side hustle, if you earn any tips, things like that. Figure out what that is. Look at it for like, uh, say like the last two months, okay? And then also take a look at what your cash outflows are. That's your expenditures. So look at the, the staples, you know, like rent, food, gas, stuff like that, that you, you know, have to have every month. And then also look at all the other expenditures, you know, clothes, entertainment, uh, video games, if you go out to bars or party a lot. 
and figure out what that is. Just look at the last two months. Don't go too crazy, but start to get an idea of what that is. And then on Tuesday, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, if you're a person that's stressed right now with the current environment and the way things are unfolding, we're going to talk about what you can do to get a more clear picture and think about your finances accurately, not dramatically or from a fear-based or lack perspective. But, um, but honestly, what I'm going to show you is something everyone should do. Uh, we have a container program. It's a remote coaching program. And I work with guys on their money reality in, in that program. And this is the thing I'm going to teach you on Tuesday is the first thing we do every time. And we've had guys who started there. We've had guys who paid off $40,000 of debt in a, in a year. We've had guys who've come to a $7,000 workshop when they've never saved more than two grand by themselves. Um, so it's a really powerful foundation that you can build on to get a solid money reality. Brian will be there too. He can probably chime in on some of the, the money mindset stuff and your releasing questions you have. So it's going to be a good day, but you'll get a lot more out of it if you, if you do this homework. So do that today or tomorrow, and then we'll see you uh, Tuesday morning. If you have questions about it, post it in the Facebook group. I'll be in there responding. Um, and then also when we kick off the call on Tuesday, maybe at the beginning, we'll take a couple questions or maybe even chat with one of you. So if any of you comes up with any big realizations from looking at this, uh, we want to hear about it because look guys, here's, here's something really important to understand. It's like all, all of our clients or guys will come to our events and they'll tell us, yeah, this is my priority. This is my goal, this and that. And what's really important to understand is that your priorities are not what you say or what you talk about. Your priorities are where you invest your time and your money. Okay. So, so for some of you, you're going to get some interesting realizations and realize something about yourself that's different than you might've thought. And if that's the case, I really want to hear about it. It's a good learning opportunity for the rest of the guys. And it's going to be the basis of what we talk about on Tuesday. So hope to see you there. And, and guys, I'll say this when I, when I got my fi basic finances in order, I was, I had trouble with this when I got my basic in order where I had a savings building and I had, uh, and it didn't matter. It was just a tiny bit I started with and I started building that changed the way my subconscious mind looked at money so much that that is the reason I'm successful today financially because of, because of that shift. So this can be the most important shift for changing your financial reality is just getting, getting to the point where you understand your money and because it just sets the mind free to focus in the right direction. So even if you just get on and, and listen and release and learn and release, trust me, it's worth it. It's so, so worth it. This is, this is the thing that's going to change your life, guys, potentially in this area. And for somebody that wrote in there that we, um, I just need some, some investing tips. We're going to have a call with an investor on here too, investing during a crisis so at some point. So um, Josh is brilliant at this stuff. Brilliant. You won't get an opportunity like this uh, all the time. So take him up on the opportunity. Okay. Um, so guys, uh, awesome call today. Really enjoyed it. If you want me to do more releasing, show up on Josh, jo uh, Josh's call tomorrow and uh, don't avoid the money reality. And then I'll gladly do some more releasing and we'll go a little deeper into that. Okay, guys. Um, anything else you need to say, Josh? Okay. Awesome. Have a beautiful day. Remember, uh, share, comment, comment in the, in the Facebook page. And uh, with that said, um, Remember, only the confident really live. Take care, guys.